Ni hao, peng yu, and welcome to another Read Aloud with Lao Shi. Today, we are going to read a story about Moon Festival or Mid Autumn Festival in China. If you are interested, there is also another story that I've read before called Moon Cakes. So, if you'd like to check that out to see some Chinese legends and about moon cakes for Moon Festival, you can. Today, though, our story is going to be about a little boy named Lean E, and I'd like you to listen for a few things. I'd like you to listen for what his mother asks him to buy for Moon Festival. This is something that every family would have in China for their Moon Festival celebration. Also, listen for the one thing that he wants the most for Moon Festival. Before we start the story, there's one word or concept that I'd like to explain, and it's the word bargain. Do you know what it means to bargain? Hmm. In some countries, when you go to the store, there's not a set price. You have to bargain with the person selling the item so that you can get the best price. For example, if I went to the store and wanted to buy a TV, but I thought the price was too high, I could say five hundred dollars for a TV. That's way too much. And then the person could say back to me, five hundred dollars is a good price. But let me see. I'll give it to you for four hundred and fifty dollars. And then I could say. Four hundred and fifty dollars is still a lot of money. Can I get it a little bit cheaper? And they could say, "Oh, four hundred dollars. That's the cheapest I can go." And then I could say, "Okay, four hundred dollars it is." So we started at a price of five hundred dollars and then made it down to four hundred dollars. That is bargaining. In China, in many of the markets that you would go to, they use bargaining to set a price. So I want you to listen in this story for Lean E's bargaining. Is he a good bargainer? Does he get a good price? I hope you enjoy the story. Lean E's Lantern, a Moon Festival Tale, by Brenda Williams, illustrated by Benjamin Lacombe. Now. Tell me again what you are going to buy from the market," said Leanie's mother. Leanie counted the items off his fingers as he repeated the list once more: mooncakes, star fruit, rice, yams, and peanuts for Uncle Huey. "Good boy," said his mother. "Can I buy a red rabbit lantern for the Moon Festival, please?" begged Leanie. "Well." That is up to you," said his mother. "I have no more money to spare, but if you bargain well at the market, you may have enough left for a red rabbit lantern." Lean E smiled happily. "That won't be a problem. I can bargain better than anyone I know." He turned to go, reciting the list like a poem as he walked away. Mooncakes, star fruit, rice. Yams, and don't forget the peanuts for Uncle Huey. You know how much he likes them. His mother called after him. As Lean E cycled to the market, he smiled and waved to people working in the rice paddies. Very soon, he saw Uncle Huey checking the fish drying outside his house. "Are you well, Uncle Huey?" asked Lean E. Yes, thank you," Uncle Huey answered as he turned the last fish to face the sun. "I'm off to the market," said Leany. "If I bargain well, Mother says I can buy a red rabbit lantern with the change." "And will you be taking it to the picnic tonight?" asked Uncle Huey. "Yes. Will you be climbing the mountain with us, Uncle Huey?" "Of course," said Uncle Huey. I may be getting old, but I still enjoy mooncakes and peanuts. Good luck with your bargaining. Lean E grinned happily and hurried on his way. Lean E smiled as he passed under the moon gate. That will bring me luck in my bargaining at the market, he thought. And now I shall live five minutes longer. In the market, Lean E stopped to look longingly at the candy apples. "Do you want to buy one?" asked the trader. 
No, thank you, said Lini. I have to buy mooncakes, star fruit, rice, yams, and I mustn't forget the peanuts for Uncle Huey. But if I bargain well, Mother says I may buy a red rabbit lantern with the change. But my candy apples are very good, said the trader. You could buy one of these and still have money to spare. They look delicious, said Lean E, but I really want a red rabbit lantern for the festival tonight. Goodbye then, said the trader, smiling. Maybe you will change your mind later on. Lean E knew he wouldn't change his mind. He really, really wanted a red rabbit lantern, even more than a candy apple. How much is a sack of rice, please? Leany asked the rice trader. Hmm, how much do you have? Asked the trader. Lean E showed him. Why, you are rich, said the trader. You could buy my finest fragrant rice with that money. No, thank you, said Leany. I have to buy mooncakes, star fruit, rice, yams, and, and I mustn't forget the peanuts for Uncle Huey. But if I bargain well, Mother says I may buy a red rabbit lantern with the change. And I really, really want a red rabbit lantern for the festival tonight. Then I shall bargain with you, the man laughed, and he started with a very high price. Lean E laughed too. That is far too much. I will give you a quarter of that amount. Too little, said the rice trader. Do you think I am a fool? They bargained and bargained until eventually Lean E agreed to a sensible price, one he knew his mother would approve of. Lean E was feeling very pleased with himself after buying the rice for such a good price. He was beginning to enjoy his shopping. So when he bought the star fruit, he bargained hard and once more he did very well. At the next stand, he paused to look at a little doe figure. He wanted to buy one to play with, but then he reminded himself that he would need to keep all the money he could if he wanted to get a red rabbit lantern. So he moved on to buy some yams. Again, he bargained well and put the yams into his basket with the star fruit and the rice. Now, Lini thought, I only have the mooncakes and the peanuts for Uncle Huey to buy. But on the way to buy the mooncakes, the lantern stall caught Leany's eye. He couldn't resist stopping to take a look. Would you like to buy one of my red rabbit lanterns for the festival tonight? Asked the lantern seller. Lean E stared. He loved the large red rabbit lanterns that were decorated with gold, but he knew they would be far too expensive. No, I must wait, he said, shaking his head. I still have to buy the mooncakes. Then I'll come straight back for one of your small red rabbit lanterns. But there are lots of other people buying mooncakes today. By the time you return, I may have sold both the small lanterns. Oh, please wait, please, he begged. I really want a red rabbit lantern. Promise me you'll keep this one for me. I'm sorry, said the lantern seller. I have a wife and children to feed, so if someone wants to the last red rabbit lantern, then I must sell it to them. After all, you may not bargain well enough, and then you will not have enough money for a lantern. Lean E hurried away to buy the mooncakes. At last, he thought, arranging the mooncakes in his basket, now I am ready to buy the red rabbit lantern. Just then, a woman walked past, munching peanuts, and suddenly he remembered Uncle Huey. Oh no, he thought, I forgot to buy the peanuts. He counted his money carefully. Even if he bargained well, he knew he would not have enough money to buy peanuts and a lantern. His heart sank right down to his shoes. He had tried so hard, and now it seemed that his dream was over. He stood still for a while, trying to decide what to do. He so wanted the lantern, 
but he also knew how much Uncle Hoi loved peanuts. Biting his lip and wiping away his tears, Lin Yi turned firmly away from the lanterns and went to buy Uncle Hoi's peanuts. Sadly, Lin Yi cycled home without his red rabbit lantern. You are a good boy, Lin Yi, said his mother. You have brought everything we need for our picnic. We have beautiful mooncakes decorated with the jade hair and the moon fairy. We have the star fruit and they will be delicious. You must have bargained well, especially for the rice and yams. But Lini, what about your red rabbit lantern? Didn't you manage to buy even a small one? No, said Lini bravely, trying not to cry. But there will be others I can see at the festival tonight. It doesn't matter. But of course, in his heart, it did matter. It mattered very much. Still, Lin Yi tried not to show it. Instead, he took the peanuts and gave them to Uncle Hui with a big smile. Thank you, Lin Yi, said Uncle Hui. Now I have a present for you. Lin Yi was speechless as he saw the red rabbit lantern. Oh, thank you, thank you, Uncle Hui, he exclaimed. It is beautiful, far better than any lantern I dreamed of having. And he beamed with happiness. How did you know that I didn't have enough money left to buy one, he asked. Well, said Uncle Hui with a twinkle in his eye, Let's just say that during moon festival time, many special things can happen, especially if you pass through the moon gate. We don't ask the reason, we are just happy. And side by side, they climbed the moonlit mountain, Uncle Hui munching his peanuts as Lin Yi proudly carried his glowing red rabbit lantern. The Legend of the Moon Fairy as told by Uncle Hui. Long, long ago, when China was at the very heart of the world, the earth had not one, but ten suns circling around it. Each of these suns would take turns shining on the earth, which was a very beautiful place with its sparkling rivers that kept the land fresh and watered for the crops to grow. One day, mysteriously, all the suns began to shine on the earth together. The people became very hot. The river started to dry up and the land was cracked and parched. The emperor begged for someone to save the earth before all the animals died from thirst. The soil became dust and there was nothing left for people to eat or drink. For a long time, no one knew what to do. But then, one of the emperor's finest archers, a man named Ho Yi, offered to shoot down all but one of the sons. The emperor was delighted to think that at last someone had come up with a clever and practical way to save the earth. Ho Yi took careful aim and one by one, he shot down nine sons. People were calling Ho Yi a hero. So to thank him, the emperor gave him a reward of a magic potion. It was made from a secret recipe of herbs, which would let him live forever. That night, Ho Yi left the potion beside him and fell into a deep sleep. His wife, Chang E, wanted to be immortal, so she took the potion and quickly drank it down. Finding herself floating upward, Chang E danced her way to the moon. When the people saw on earth saw Chang E, they began to call her the moon fairy. Chang E was very happy living on the moon. She built herself a crystal moon palace and made friends with a kind and gentle rabbit. He explained that he had once offered himself as food to three wise fairies who were disguised as hungry old men. As a reward for his amazing offer, 
They allowed him to come and live on the moon, and he became known as the Jade Rabbit. Sitting outside one day beside the rabbit, Chang'e shivered in the cold air of the moon. Suddenly, she coughed up some of the herb potion in the form of a pill. She wanted to share her happiness with the people on Earth. So she asked the rabbit to grind the pill into a small pieces and scatter them on our earth where they would fall like magic raindrops on, onto those who believed in her. Now, if you look closely at the moon at the time of moon festival, you just might see the moon fairy dancing across the face of the moon like a beautiful shadow. The end.